Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here and today I want to talk about 2021's Games of the Year. This isn't like a Game Awards ceremony, I'm not going to narrow this down to one because you know what, that's always incredibly difficult but instead I just want to highlight some of the best games that both myself and the team have played this year. Of course, whenever I do some of these lists, there will always be games that I don't get to mention. There were so many great games this year, admittedly a lot of things did also get moved into next year but we did still have some fantastic titles so I want to recap some of those and kind of just look back. So if you guys do enjoy this, a like would be super appreciated. Let me know down below what is your game of the year or what are your games of the year if you have more than one what games do you enjoy the most and what are you looking forward to next year and of course don't forget if you guys have been enjoying the content lately and this year don't forget to subscribe we've got so much stuff coming your way next year you definitely don't want to miss it but let's kick it off with monster hunter rise i mean look right you guys know us from monster hunter I couldn't not mention this game, and while admittedly Rise may not necessarily be perfect by everyone's standards, yes of course when you look at some of the sort of post-launch support, some of the sort of collaboration quests, yeah people kind of hoped there might have been a little bit more, but regardless, Monster Hunter Rise is a fantastic game and still right now stands as one of my favourite Monster Hunter games. I love some of the additions they introduced, I love the wire bug, I love the silk by moves, I love how fluid it makes combat, again I know that can be a contentious topic, some people are like, ah moving around makes it too easy, but regardless some of these features of course just make it in for one single monster hunter game and i think the wire bug i think the fluidity i think the movement in this game is incredible it looks great on the switch but of course we do have the pc version coming next year which of course means you get to enjoy that at high frame rates crispy graphics all that goodness but honestly it just gets me even more excited for sunbreak because while this of course is the base version Whenever you get the ultimate expansion, then you of course have more monsters, more moves, more weapons, more of all the stuff that you love. So taking an already solid foundation and building on top of that means we have a lot of stuff to look forward to. But regardless, Monster Hunter Rise was a fantastic game. I sunk many, many hours into it and I enjoyed every moment of it. Moving on from there to game number two, Deathloop. Deathloop, of course, is a rather interesting one this year. Again, game from Arcane. You, of course, know them for their signature first-person gameplay style. If any of you guys missed this one, then, of course, Deathloop in the game, you take on the role of Colt. He's an assassin who's basically stuck in a time loop, and he's been tasked by taking out eight targets called Visionaries across the island before midnight. Now, of course, the interesting element in this game is that, of course, all these targets need to be taken out in one single day. If you die, then you restart the loop. You have have to go back and do everything all over again and of course there's the added difficulty of having Juliana either player controlled or AI controlled who will invade your game world and also try and mess you up. This is a game that has a lot of those kind of like tight gameplay mechanics whereby it's all about building that mental map as you go throughout it learning where targets are learning where they'll be learning how to change things to sort of influence that so that eventually you can get your perfect run. It's a lot of fun to play through a lot of fun to sort of like work that out and of course when you do finally nail that run the feeling of satisfaction is unmatched. Then moving on from there to game number three, Returnal. This is a game that honestly I was very surprised didn't show up much in the Game Awards. I thought this game was fantastic. I'll put my hand up and say I have not actually completed it. I do still keep getting my butt kicked before I get to the end. However, regardless from my time playing it, I've had a fantastic time. If any of you guys don't know about this game, Returnal is a third person shooter, but it also features roguelike elements and some sort of psychological horror, which is kind of interesting that I would be playing it. I really don't like horror games. I... I will not touch them with a barge pole, I will run over hot coals to avoid them. However, this one, it might be the fact that of course it's a roguelike, which I really enjoy. But of course, also the sort of visuals in this one, the mystical nature of it paired with the sort of like spacey aesthetic and the sort of aliens and the crazy like weapons you get. Just the gameplay in this was fantastic. I thought it had a really good use of the DualShock controller as well, using the sort of like multi-press on the triggers to get the alternate functions. I really like what they did with that. And just in general, the gameplay flow, it just plays really, really well. If you like roguelikes, then of course it's definitely one to check out if you like maybe sort of the uh, more psychological horror side of things then the narrative definitely gets quite interesting as it unfolds but of course it is quite difficult so I do appreciate that was a turn off for some people because of course anytime you die you have to go back to the beginning but regardless Return was a fantastic game definitely worth checking out. Following off from there we then have Tales of Arise one of my personal games of the year this, of course, the next installment in the Tales franchise. And honestly, I think it is a perfect jumping in point. Anyone that hasn't played a Tales of game before, they are all kind of self-contained, so you can kind of pick up whichever one you want. But I do feel like Tales of Arise is a fantastic entry point in the series. They streamline some of the mechanics while still keeping the Tales of DNA intact. It introduces you to mechanics in a very sort of intelligent, layered way throughout the game. So, you know, admittedly, a lot of people played the demo and were like, whoa, this is hella confusing. I don't get this. 
when you play the game, it of course introduces you to things in a gradual manner, to the point where at the end of the game you are pulling off crazy combos and looking insane. I know that some people weren't too much a fan of this because of course, you know, you have the typical anime over the top action where everyone is calling out their move names and when things do get crazy, you just have people shouting on screen. Honestly, I kind of like that. I love that sort of stuff. I love that sort of shonen anime feel. So it works for me. Maybe it doesn't for you. But this, combined with the fact that, of course, you have a nice wide linear game world, which, of course, gives you plenty of opportunity to explore, but in a much more guided fashion without it being super daunting and you getting lost for hours. Instead, you kind of have that perfect balance of being able to explore, find stuff, whilst also remaining on the beaten track. I feel like it's kind of a good JRPG for people that maybe lead busier lifestyles because it won't take you hundreds of hours to complete. You can definitely invest hundreds of hours into it if you want to, but you can also play through it in a pretty streamlined manner. Then moving on from there, if you want a co-op fix, it takes two. This is one that I personally didn't have a chance to play this year, but some of the team did. And of course, this also made it into the Game of the Year nominations this year. And of course, this is a really good co-op game. It's an action adventure game. And of course, it has platforming elements, but it's specifically designed for split screen cooperative multiplayer, making it a perfect choice if maybe you're looking for something to play co-op over the festive period, something like that. So you can either play it local or online, but the game features a variety of different mechanics, all of which are interwoven into the story and of course the level design. But of course the co-op nature of it means that you'll be using that to solve puzzles, overcome you know challenges, objectives, anything like that. So honestly, this is actually one that I've been wanting to play myself. So I'm definitely gonna be uh, you know jumping into this in the holidays because I really do like those kind of co-op platformers. And visually, this one's also got a lot of those kind of feel good vibes. Then next on the list we have Metroid Dread. This is an incredible title from the moment I played this from the very beginning, just jumping in and literally playing the first hour and feeling how fluid this felt. Honestly, they have done an incredible job with this game. Metroid Dread looks fantastic. The gameplay just feels great. I feel like it's also one of those things, I mentioned this in a previous video, but I feel like if you've never played a Metroidvania before, Metroid Dread is probably a good place to jump in because they have all the kind of traditional mechanics that you would of course expect. You're backtracking through the world, using of course your new items to navigate through environmental areas that you previously couldn't get access to. However, the game is also designed in such a sort of intelligent way whereby you sort of have loose guidances, not to the point like it's not going to tell you where to go because that's of course not the point in a Metroidvania game, but I do feel like there are some intelligent level design choices in this game that do make it a lot easier to sort of navigate your way through and also depending on quite how much you want to complete, you can complete this relatively quickly. So it's also the kind of game that people could play over a weekend. I think if you've never played a Metroidvania, if you've never played a Metroid game, I would highly recommend picking it up. The only one thing of course is that the controls can get a little bit tricky because they do map every perceivable button. So sometimes in the boss battles, when you're trying to juggle between a grappling hook and rockets and bullets and lots of stuff, there is a little bit of sort of finger gymnastics you need to perform. But once you get that nailed, honestly, the gameplay experience from this is just phenomenal. Then, of course, I have to mention Monster Hunter Stories 2. Of course, another Monster Hunter title. I mean, it's going to make it into this list, all right? But Stories 2 was amazing. I'm not someone that normally plays turn-based games personally, it's just not my genre. That being said, I did still play Monster Hunter Stories 1 because it's Monster Hunter, all right? I'm biased, I like Monster Hunter, I'm gonna play it. That being said, Monster Hunter Stories 2 has so many great mechanics and also has so much content. This is a game, especially off the back of Rise, where some people were sort of uh, lamenting the fact that there wasn't necessarily as much post-launch support. Monster Hunter Stories 2 was just like, yo, have everything you could possibly want. They dropped a game that was big, full of loads of content, and they had an extensive post-launch content rollout. Honestly, going from catching different monsters, building your monster team, to crafting different armor sets, if you haven't played Monster Hunter Stories in any capacity, you don't have to play number one, you can jump in at number two. It is like the best bits of Monster Hunter and Pokemon combined. So uh, yeah, definitely check this out. I had a great time with this, the whole team had a great time with this, and I know a lot of people this year really did enjoy this. Then we have Ratchet and Clank, A Rift Apart. This one, honestly, I, again, I like my platformers, right? I've played some Ratchet and Clank games. I haven't played every single one of them, but I do, of course, just enjoy my 3D platformers. And this one is just a visual treat. It has some incredible graphics, especially when you factor in the sort of uh, pulling yourself through rifts. That is a thing that visually just never gets old. When you use that and you grab and pull yourself between different rifts, just like visually the first time you ever saw it in the trailer, I was just blown away and experiencing that in real time is honestly amazing. It is a game that doesn't necessarily bring anything new to the table, not to say it has to, you know, not every single video game has to be a groundbreaking masterpiece. Some games can just be more of what you like. And I feel like that's what Ratchet and Clank does well. Yeah, of course you have the nice sort of riff mechanic, but outside of that, it's kind of what you know and love from Ratchet and Clank. 
get cool weapons, get cool gadgets, go and collect stuff, fight some enemies, complete the story, platform in 3D. It's just a nice game. Then we have Death's Door, which again is another indie title this year that got a lot of attention, and rightfully so. It is an amazing game. If you haven't played it before or seen it, it is an isometric action game where you basically take on the role of a small crow who works as a reaper who has to go and collect souls for the reaping commission. And on the first mission, you basically are sent out to collect the soul of a monster who doesn't want to leave life willingly. And after defeating that, you then start to get exposed to the narrative. The crow intervenes, steals the soul, and tells you there's potentially a conspiracy theory going on, and you then need to go and help him. And in doing so, you then get access to the whole world. You just start exploring it. You, of course, go through different dungeons, battle different bosses, get different weapons. It is a game that visually just looks really cool. I just love the art style for this game. Combat-wise, pretty simple. It's kind of like a sort of top-down Zelda game in that regard, or isometric, should I say. But combat and just sort of gameplay just feels fluid, feels sort of like nice and weighty when you're attacking, and it's just a lot of fun to play. So if you haven't checked this one out, it is now available on most platforms. It's available on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. It'd be a great one to play on Steam Deck next year, but either way, this is a good one. Then, of course, we have Halo Infinite. Of course, it came out towards the end of the year, but this is the third chapter in the sort of Reclaimer saga. Of course, Halo 4, Halo 5 Guardians. And now this, Chief is back. But, of course, outside of the fact that you have your traditional Halo campaign, it has an open world segment to it, which is fantastic. You have the ability in between missions to sort of go off and do side quests and explore the world, find things, collectibles, do bounties, get weapons, all that kind of stuff, paired of course with the fact that Halo multiplayer has just been doing gangbusters, which is fantastic to see. I've always enjoyed Halo multiplayer and seeing it as kind of like a return to glory. I know it might not be perfect, there might still be a lot of sort of battle pass stuff they're trying to work out, but just seeing everyone just raving about Halo multiplayer, enjoying it, and just sort of like seeing that passion has been phenomenal to watch. Then for the fighting game fans, of course, this year has been pretty good for fighting games, but of course, Guilty Gear Strive. Love this game. I mean, admittedly, look, I've said this before, I'm not great at fighting games. I just like the genre. I just enjoy them. I get my butt kicked most of the time, but Soxy Bear on the team, of course, is massive into fighting games. He spent a lot of time playing this one. And of course, if you're an Arc System Works fan, then we're just eating good this year, basically. They also did a good job of sort of like streamlining some of the mechanics while still keeping the Guilty Gear core intact so people can still enjoy it. But at the same time, if you're jumping in for the first time, it isn't necessarily so daunting. So if you enjoy your fighting games, this one is a must. Then another one, if you want another sort of 3D platforming fix, Psychonauts 2 is another one. This one is one that honestly, I was kind of on the fence of, partly because the visual style, I feel like it's one of those uh, Marmite style styles. You either just like it or you don't. And I'll be honest with Psychonauts 2, I lent more towards the not liking it side, but irrespective of that, it does of course have some fantastic gameplay and again, giving you your 3D platform fix. The game itself has similar gameplay to its predecessor. You control Raz, who is of course the newly graduated Psychonaut with powerful psychic abilities. And of course, he delves into the minds of other people. You use your psi powers such as telekinesis, pyrokinesis, levitation, all in combination with more common platforming elements to of course, navigate your way around the world. And then finally, well, almost finally, I have an honorable mention, but finally, Scarlet Nexus. Now, Scarlet Nexus is an interesting one. I feel like this is going to be one of those games that in a few years might just be a cult classic. It is a game that in segments is fantastic. It has fantastic combat. I really do enjoy it. I like the whole sort of like brain linking mechanic, the fact you can link with your teams to inherit different abilities. Honestly, the moment to moment gameplay is a lot of fun. And narratively speaking, it has a crazy crazy story. I mean, I'm not even going to like hint at it because if you haven't played it, I want you to experience it. But there were many times in that game that I was just like, what the hell? That being said, I feel like the only thing that lets this game down is the fact that the mob variety is quite limited. And towards the end of the game, you do end up just going through multiple rooms, killing the same enemies over and over again. Now, the fact that, of course, the gameplay is so fun means it is still enjoyable to battle them. And I feel like, if anything, it's a game you should play maybe a little bit slower paced because I just rushed through it and played it in a couple of days. So maybe that stuff was exacerbated. But I will say that towards the end of it, the lack of enemy variety did get a little bit draining. But outside of that, if you can look past that, then it does have really enjoyable combat. Of course, an incredible story. And just visually, I like it as well. And then finally, I said last one, Honorable mention, you know what? I was really upset that Eastwood didn't make it into Game of the Year nominations this year, but Eastwood is my personal Game of the Year. This one, I just love this game so much. I love this game visually. I love this game from a gameplay point of view. It might not necessarily have done anything groundbreakingly new. In fact, it didn't really. It was basically just a Zelda game with some really cool pixel art, but I like that. I like my Zelda games, I like my pixel art, I like my music. I thought it was really cool. Admittedly, the story does go a little bit weird and 
kind of starts to have a few plot holes towards the end. So maybe it wasn't perfect, but honestly, if you like great pixel art, if you enjoy Zelda games, if you enjoy, you know, exploring through dungeons, completing some quests, kind of just exploring the world, I highly recommend you check this game out. It's a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, personally, if it's just down to me, this is my game of the year. But there you have it. That's a little rundown on uh, some of the games that 2021 has brought our way. Again, there were so many more fantastic games. Hitman 3 is another one I didn't get a chance to mention, but of course, I love my Hitman games. But this list could go on forever. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, don't forget to tell me in the comments down below what game of the year you guys chose, and of course, what games you're looking forward to, and keep it locked for plenty more. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to catch more from us, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss our latest uploads. And if you want somewhere to hang out, play games, or chat all things from games to anime, food to fitness, consider joining the Arax Gaming Discord.